Chicken Ollie King is one of the quickest and easiest recipes that you can make, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life, using real food, and we keep it real simple. Today's recipe is super simple. It is Chicken a la King. And I'm gonna use the Ninja Foodie six and a half quart for this recipe. However, the only function I'm gonna use is the sear saute. So you could do this recipe exactly the same on the stove or in your Instant Pot using sear saute function, okay? But before we even get started with cooking, you wanna think about what you're gonna serve it over or what you're gonna serve with it. And what I like to use is puff pastry. So I like to make little puff pastry shells and I do that in the oven. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. It's super easy. It's also great served with noodles and it's served over toast sometimes. So you don't have to do it this way, that's for sure. Grab a few thick pieces of toast, toast them up and dish it right over and it will be delicious. But let me go ahead up, since I'm gonna use the puff pastry, let me go ahead and get that ready. Now I have two sheets of puff pastry here. I'm gonna start with one because I'm gonna make the individual like cups, okay, of puff pastry that we then pour our chicken ala king into. Okay, so when working with puff pastry that's frozen, which typically if you buy it in the store, that's how it comes, you wanna take it out 30 minutes to 30 to 60 minutes before you wanna use it because you want it to thaw at least partially. Then I take some flour and I just kind of lightly coat the surface of my cutting board or you could use any clean flat surface that you like and then just sort of gently open up the pastry sheet. If you meet a lot of resistance, then it might be too cold and you might need to let it sit a little bit longer. Then remove this paper here and you wanna roll it out a little bit and that's what I'm gonna do right now. Take this here, move it around and you wanna roll it out just a little bit thinner. There is flour on this surface already but I add just a little bit more. Grab your rolling pin and start to roll it out. I'm gonna get little puff pastry dishes out of this. So I want to keep it in a square and I want each of them to be about, let's see, probably about four inches by four inches. I flip the puff pastry over and put some flour on the other side because you really don't want it to stick. All right, that looks good. It's a 12 by 12 square. And now I'm gonna take a large knife and just cut it into equal strips. So about four inches. Now I don't measure this. I mean, you certainly can, but I just eyeball it. Then you also want to do these in thirds. All right, there we go. All right, now we wanna get it into our muffin tin. I have a 12 cup, you know, a 12 spot muffin tin here, which is pretty normal. So let me go ahead and lay them in. What you wanna do is put them in every other one You have three extra ones here if you did it the way that I did. Just put those over to the side and bring this up. And now this is where the magic happens. So if you just put your puff pastry in, if you tuck these down and put them in, what happens is they start to really puff up in the center. So instead of doing that, what I like to do is put a cupcake liner in just like that and fill it with dried beans. This is the same principle as doing a blind bake on a pie crust and it works beautifully. Let's just put a few beans in there. I'm gonna do that for each one and then I can fill in the other three. All right, so once you have the six done, now it's pretty easy. You do the same thing for the other ones, okay? But now you have some room to work. All right, now I'm gonna pop these in a preheated oven on 425, and while they bake, I'll make the chicken a la king, and it is that quick. 
The puff pastries will take between 15 and 20 minutes to cook and that is plenty of time to make up the chicken a la cake. So to get started, whether you're using a frying pan or the Ninja Foodi, you are going to turn on the burner if it's on the stove, probably on medium high, turn the Ninja Foodi on high. We may reduce that a little bit later, but right now it's gonna stay on high. And put in four tablespoons of salted butter. Now you can use unsalted butter, that's no problem, but you may just need to add additional seasonings at the end. So, Chicken Ala King is made with very few ingredients, but one of them is usually mushrooms. You can certainly omit them if you don't like mushrooms, but it is one of the main ingredients in the Chicken Ala King. So, what I have here are portobellas. You can use baby portobellas or you could use white button mushrooms, it's perfectly fine. They're sliced in about a quarter inch slice. One thing about cooking mushrooms and sauteing mushrooms, especially for this type of recipe, is you want to get them golden brown so that they have tons of flavor. And to do that, we're going to cook them in batches, okay? And I know it's a little more labor intensive, so if you don't wanna do it, then just dump them all in. But what's gonna happen is they're gonna steam instead of really saute. And it's a different taste, it's a different texture, and definitely, um, I think it's worth doing them in batches, okay? So let's let the butter melt, and then we'll get our first layer in. Once the butter starts sizzling, that's your cue to start putting in your mushrooms. You want them in a single layer and not crowded. And that's gonna give you the best saute. And browning, and that's really what, it abs they absorb the butter. Oh my gosh, they're so amazing. Okay, that looks good. So that was a little under half of the mushrooms. So I'll probably do two batches, maybe two batches and a little bit more. But you don't have to remove the mushrooms, so that's a good thing. You can start pushing them over to the side and it'll be fine. So I used about nine ounces of mushrooms. Anywhere between eight and ten uh, ounces of mushrooms is a good amount for this recipe as far as the ratio of ingredients goes. But you can use as many or as few mushrooms as you like, really. It's not going to make any difference. All right, so after about two minutes, you can go ahead and flip them over and get the other side brown. All right, they are really looking good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the gaps here. All right, the last of the mushrooms are in. Now I do a light seasoning because I really believe in layering the seasoning. So I season each layer as I cook it. That is going to give you the most flavorful dish at the end, and it will also reduce the amount of salt that you use overall. What I have here is one and a half teaspoons of fine grind sea salt and a half of a teaspoon of pepper, and that's just the seasoning uh, blend and the ratio that I'm gonna use for this recipe. And just sprinkle that on top here. These are almost done. They're looking beautiful. Really, really beautiful. Let me pull one out here because this one's like perfect. So it's absolutely perfect. It holds its shape. It's golden brown. Oh my gosh, it's going to be delicious. This is so worth the time. All right, now that they're mostly done, I'm just going to flip them over. If there's a few that haven't brown, don't sweat it. It's not a big deal. Now I'll just give this a little toss there. Oh my gosh. Look at how gorgeous those mushrooms are. Perfect, perfect. Okay, now we need to start to make our roux. Now we already put the fat in and it cooked with the mushrooms. Uh, I could add more in, but I don't think we're gonna need to. So what I do now is sprinkle the flour on the mushrooms and just stir it around a little bit to get it to cook. And I'm gonna use a quarter cup or four tablespoons. And then just stir it all around. It will coat these mushrooms. And you want to make sure that you don't see any flour. So if you still see flour, like I'm seeing a little flour, and I'm going to tell you exactly why I'm seeing a little bit of flour and how I'm going to fix it. And that is because I had my, my four tablespoons or quarter cup measured out over here, and I ended up using a little bit more. I thought it looked like it was a little bit too much. 
But anyway, hey, this stuff happens. So I used a little bit too much of the flour, no big deal. I'm gonna add in another two tablespoons of butter and it'll work out just fine. All right, now we will let this butter melt and coat the flour here and it'll be perfect. Now you want these to cook, you want the flour to cook probably about three minutes. That looks perfect. So it looks a little pasty, but you're definitely not seeing the flour, the white of the flour. That looks good. Now we're gonna deglaze the pot. And I'm using one cup of chicken stock and a quarter cup of sherry. Now, if you don't wanna use the sherry, don't worry about it. You certainly don't have to. Just use one and a quarter cups of chicken stock and it'll be fine. Now, this will start to thicken almost immediately. And now we just add in the rest of our ingredients. You can keep this on high, it's perfectly fine. What I have here is already cooked. I sous vide the chicken, it's so wonderful that way. It's about, it's two breasts, two 10 ounce breasts, so it's a, and it's about two cups of chicken. You can use rotisserie chicken in this dish. If you wanted to use raw chicken, what I would do is cook the chicken first, okay? So cube it up and then saute it or even do a short pressure cook time if you wanted to do it that way um, because this moves really fast and you don't wanna have to worry about whether or not your chicken is cooked all the way through. All right, look how thick that is already. Okay, next ingredient going in, eight ounces of frozen peas, and they're still partially frozen. I take them out in the beginning, but they're still partially frozen. And then I have a quarter cup of pimentos. That goes in. Then I put about half of my seasoning mix in now, and then I wait and see if it needs any more at the end. Go ahead and stir that around. And then we're gonna add in one and a third cups of whole milk, or you could use half and half, that's perfectly fine. Stir that around. And then I like to add in a little bit of cream for richness, and I'm using one third of a cup of heavy whipping cream. And then my secret ingredient that I always add, totally optional, is a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. I think that really adds a, just a beautiful addition to the chicken a la king. But again, totally optional. All right, so let me go ahead and just let this thicken and heat those peas through. But basically that's it, we're done, okay? That's all there is to making chicken a la king. The longest part is sauteing those mushrooms, but let me tell you, it is worth it. Let me go grab those puff pastries out of the oven. So after 10 minutes of baking these little cups in the oven, I went ahead and removed the paper liner with the beans in it. A few of them puffed up, so I just sort of poked them with a fork to kind of get them to go back down again, and then left them in the oven. It took about, I would say about 18 minutes to cook these, and now they're absolutely perfect. And you can definitely make these up ahead of time. So if you're having you know, a party or something like that, make them up ahead of time, let them cool, and then you can just warm them back up in the oven or don't even worry about it because the chicken a la king or whatever you choose to pour in there is gonna be hot and it'll be perfectly fine. But I'm gonna set those over there until this sautés just for a few more minutes to really thicken up and then we will be good to go. Now, if it doesn't thicken up, because you know, hey, it might not thicken up. Last time I used half and half, this time I used whole milk. I had a little issue with my flour ratios. So maybe it's not gonna thicken. I don't want you to ever worry because you can always fix that. And so if mine doesn't thicken up, I will fix it and I'll show you how. All right, it's looking good. It's thickened up some. I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna need to thicken it more or not. But right now I wanna taste for those seasonings. So I'm checking the salt and the pepper, especially because I've got a little bit here left over. Mm. 
it's good, but it can use a little more salt, so I'm gonna go ahead and add this in here. It starts to boil, you wanna turn your heat down a little bit, because you really don't want it to be boiling. Now, while I might thicken this for tonight, if you were serving it tomorrow, don't worry about thickening it because it will thicken as it sits in the refrigerator. So if this is something you're making ahead of time and you're going to reheat, don't even concern yourself because it'll be fine. Now, the sauce is a little bit thin. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that with a little bit of cornstarch. This is not in the recipe because it shouldn't be like that, it should be thicker. I'm gonna definitely write the recipe for the half and half, that's what I used last time, and it worked beautifully, so it's the, just the milk is just a little bit thinner, and so it didn't thicken up as it should. I'm still boiling here, so I'm gonna back my heat down to low and grab just a little bit of the cornstarch. Not much, because it doesn't need much. So I'm gonna use two teaspoons of water and one teaspoon of cornstarch, and we'll see how that does. Now you could certainly leave this on low and let it simmer to reduce even more and skip this step, um, or use half and half and the right flour to butter ratios and you'll be fine, it won't happen to you like it did to me. Um, but you know, sometimes we're in a hurry and we need to fix things. So this is a quick fix. One teaspoon of cornstarch, two teaspoons of water, stir it together so there's no lumps and then Put it in here and you do want it to be hot to thicken but i think this is plenty hot enough and it looks like it is thickening already that's looking good that's looking really good so just give it about a minute or two and if it is still too thin for you then do another teaspoon, another two teaspoons of water a teaspoon of cornstarch two teaspoons of water and keep doing that until it's the consistency that you like, but this is looking really good now. Oh yeah. Take a nice big scoop, fill up the cup, and then you also want to overflow it a little bit, okay? All right, perfect. And you could put some more on. You could dress it up with a little bit of parsley if you wanted to. I'm not gonna worry about that today though. All right, first up, let's try one of those mushrooms. Oh my gosh, it's delicious, amazing. The chicken is delicious. One thing that I would like is a little bit of cracked pepper. All right, I love pepper. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and, oh, that is the sound of perfection, the crunchy, Puff pastry shell with the creamy, delicious chicken a la king. Mm. So simple, so delicious. Mm. That pepper was really the added kick that I like. But if you don't like pepper, don't add it. If you don't like nutmeg, leave it out. You can make any changes. You could add onions, take out the mushrooms, whatever you wanna do. It is your food, make it the way you love it. Make it yours, make it delicious, and keep it real.